swear with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul.
sometime will understand. Then trust in God through all our days. When not for you, we'll hold your hand. Though dark your way still, sing and pray. Sometimes, sometime we'll understand. God know the way he holds the key. He guide us with an hungry hand. Sometimes. Sometimes we'll understand Then trust in God In all our days Fear not for ye We'll hold your hand Though dark Your ways still see and pray Sometimes, sometimes we'll understand. In die naam van God, die Vader, die Seen en die Heilige Gees. Liewe Vader van liefde en van genade, ons bring nou van moore voor u onze dank, onze prijs en eer tot uw naam. Ja, liewe Heere, ook in oomblikke van wanneer ons moet groet een geliefde, ook in oomblikke van teerheid, oomblikke van hartseer, van droef, wil ons dankie sê. Dankie dat almal van ons, Vader, vandag kan kom na u toe. U ken elke ene by naam. Hier is kinders, hier is broeders en sisters, familielede, vriende, gemeente, wat vandag kom groet, een groot gees in die werk, in ons lewe. Een wie Vader met ons hier die pad gestap het, Een wie kinders vader geleid het, voorbeeld was vir hulle, vir hulle liefgeheid het, vir hulle gesorg het met alles wat hulle nodig het. Maar grootsliks vir hulle wonderlijke voorbeeld was. En die afscheid is een moeilike ene. En vraag asjeblief dat u vir hulle die troos moet gee nou. Gee hulle die kracht en wees u hier by hulle. Kom in ons midde daarom en sien ons reikelijk. Heren, Ons kan niks sonder u doen nie. Ons het nie u nodig elke oomblik van die dag. En hierdie oomblik, soos nooit van tevore, kyk ons na u. Help asjeblief, kom in ons midde en sien ons reiklik. Vader, ons as mens, kom ons kort. Ons as knechte gestuur en geoffordineer uit die apostelbediening. En laat die kracht van die heilige geest vandag die trooster wees vir die gemeente en vir die familie van morgen. Heere, sien ons asjeblief. Gee ons die eenheid met ons apostel, district en stamapostel, dat hulle gebedes ons deel kan bekom. Jere, jy is die trooster, jy het balsam, jy is vir amal, als en als. Jy het die balsam, jy het ook, vader, dit wat hulle nodig het in hierdie oomblikke. Laat ons dit nou ondervind in een speciale manier. Hoor ons asjeblief, liewe jere, ons bid en vraag dit nou in Jesus naams onwil. Amen. Geliefde familie en broeders en sisters, Eerstelijk ook aan jylle die groete wense van ons apostel. Hy onthou vir jylle in hierdie oomblik ook van morgen. 
die woord wat gekies is van morgen is uit die psalm, ek het 16e vers lees ek, en die 8e en die 9e vers, die is die basis. Ek stel die Heere altyd dier voor my, omdat hy aan my rechterhand is, sal ek nie wankel nie. Daarom is my hart blij en my eer juig, ook sal my vlees in veiligheid woon. In Engels, our Bible, word this morning, Psalm 16, the verses 8 and 9. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Geliefde familie, vrienden, broers en sisters, ja, vanmorgen is een speciale paar oomblikke vir u. Nie een van ons, en ek was seker, u het nie geplan om vandag, op hierdie dag, 24. juli, hier in, in hierdie saal te vergader. Misschien het daar, was daar ander planne gewees, vir vandag. En God het het so uitgewerk in die lewe van u as a familie en ook in die lewe van is a daddy, is a broer vriend van ons en knig, mede knig en dit is nie makkelijk om, nooit makkelijk om tot ziens te sê nie, maar vandag wil ons wil ons sê kan ek sekerlik soos ek hier staan en amal van u aan die hulde blikke en dit wat u gedeelig met my kan ek eerlik en openlik sê dat ons leef vandag een groot geest, wil ek Ek weet nie nou een betere naam om wat te sê in Afrikaans nie, wat maybe Uncle Wilfred was, he was special. Special to you as a dad, special as a brother, as a friend, I know, and I always admire Uncle Wim for that, because ek weet sy vriendekring was van die oud tot die jong, en hy was deel van, baie tyd deel van, van sy vriendekring gewees. En amal kom met hulle verskillende gedagtes, vriende, mede knechte, wat lang met hom gewerk het, en hulle het vriende bekom. En want dit was die natuur gewees, van hoe Anke Wolfie en baie sy hartige, en almal sy harte, wil ek gesê, geklim het, met sy speciale eigenskappe wat hy geheel het. Ach, die familie het gevra, dat ons dit nie, op bietserie vandag nie, wat laat my toe om dit deel een bykie uit die lewe, van Wolfred, bys, soos jy weet, hy is geboore op die 12e januari 1955 in Heidelberg. Ja, hulle was 
deel van de 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 drie zusters en één broer wat nog oor is, wat oor, wat ook er lief is. Hij is een goddelijke, hij is groot geraakt. Ik zie hem alle vertel zo zijn 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 stories van van hoe hulle daar als als nieuwe postulis, of als als christenen daar waar hulle groot geraakt het en hulle Daddy had klavier gespeeld. Hij was lief om muziek geweest en zo so het hulle allemaal daar die liefde met Wolfert ook aangekweek, dat hij echt daarna kon die klavier speel zonder om voor meer, ik denk iemand het geskryf, hy het eens lesse gehet nie, maar hy kon het liefst die gesange kon hy speel. En uh, ons allemaal praat van sy leven, die kinder skryf, hulle sê, you know, hulle praat van hulle pa as a strong character. I think a few of you is mentioned that, that your daddy was a strong character. He, he didn't stand back for anything. A few of you is wrote about that. He said, he, no challenge did he ever stand back for. And he faced everything with God's fear. Spoke about, you know, as a minister, there was no sacrifice to great. There's nothing that Wolfred wouldn't do for God's people and for God's servants. He was, you know, he, he said, he, the children says that he taught him about offering and always had words of wisdom to share with everybody. He enjoyed, you know, he said he lived his life to the fullest. He enjoyed, you know, being amongst people. He was, I mean, I was all I can say, he was was a part of a rectus group, the last, for a few years, I was with Uncle Wolfred, and he was a man, he was a man who was easily in the center of a society to come. As hy een story wil vertel, en hy story klink hier, hy sê, hy het ek vir het veel vertel, so vertel hy die story. En as hy gewoon vir die story vertel het, dan moet hy weet, allemaal, as dit is die plek stil. Jy weet, hy het een manier gehet om iets te sê, ek het laatst week, toe ek hoor, enkel over, dit is wel hier, ek het gewoon net, ek denk aan, het ek een sister begrawe laatst week, en dan daad hulle geskryf, hulle gesê, sy wil, sy was nooit in die, en sy was never in die sente, sy was never, Ze uh, was always in the background. En toen ik nou denk, ja, dan denk ik, nee, nee, nee. Nou, voor ochtend moet ik zeggen, Uncle Wolfie was die andere kant geweest. Hij was nooit in die background geweest. Uncle Wolfie het makkelijk gekomen. En ik ga even zeggen, dat met, hij was hier voorbarig, hij was hier uh, uh, iets partelig, zijn natuur. En we zijn het oorzaak gewacht. Nou, kom Uncle Wolfie uit, kom vertel zij die story. Kom, kom, kom praat zij met ons. Hij, hij was een wat, wat net een manier geeft het om een story te vertellen. Wat even hij wil gezegd. Niet net grap gemaakt het nie, en ek weet alles, hy was, ek sê die families, hy was baie kodder gewees, hy was altyd die ceremoniemeester, en baie mense het, het sê hy, dat toe hulle die hulde plekke kreeg, het baie vir hulle gesê, hoe, wanneer even hulle met Ankel Wolfie was, dan was hy altyd een glimlach, hulle het altyd weggegaan met een lekker warme gevoel in hulle hart, en dit was die persoon, ek denk, wat, wat, wat jylle ook geleek ken het, hy was baie lief vir die Heerese werk, en jylle skryf, sy kinder skryf het, Ek denk van die familie en die knechte wat ook skryf, vertel ook van die liefde wat hy geheet het. Ek het gepraat met som van die, van sy vorige leiers wat nou afgetree is, en ge, bekie gepraat van ankel van, van uh, Evangelis Bijs, en die een district oudste sê van my, hy sê, Theo, jy weet, Wolfred was a, a, he was a follower, a true follower in the, in, the, in the true sense of the word. En hy sê, wie weet hoe kom? Voor Wolfert kon je enig iets gegeven. Wolfert het nooit samen met zijn. Hij heeft nooit. Uh, 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 he never had any arguments of problems with his leaders. He followed whatever the leaders say. Whether it was a younger guy, whether it was his friend. I know one, at one time, the last few years before retirement, uh, the evangelist Royen, which is younger than him, and they friends also, he became director of Matrosfontein. And what did Uncle Wolfie do? He supported him, committed as a, as a servant. You know, because that was his servant heart. And you know what uh, the apostle said recently about another evangelist when he spoke about humility. He said, this was a humble brother, a humble servant of God. And you know how you know somebody's humble? The ability to follow. And then I thought of Uncle Wolfram, because that was him. Now, as if Uncle Wolfram had seen it from the other side, he had a way to say, he had a way to say, he had a way to say, but then maybe you wouldn't equate that to humility. But if you knew his character, you knew the person, the servant that he was, then you know that is the character of a servant who is humble, who, who knows what God expects of him. Uncle Wolfred, they say, um, 
Hij was altijd laat, was hij aan het geweest. Want hij het altijd, hy, hy, ik denk die een van de discos er toch op meen, hy het altijd voor sy afspraken, hy het nooit een plek na toe gegaan, hy het beaand nie. As Ankel Wolverd in die flat was, dan het Ankel Wolverd, miskien by nummer 15, moest hy ingegaan het, maar dan het die eerste by nummer 1 begin, en hy het nummer by allemaal ingepop, en hallo gesê, en gebid miskien nie, tot dan kom hy eventually, het hy by nummer 15 gekom. En dit was hy natuur geweest. en dis ook om, dit was die liefde wat hy geheer het vir die werk. Vir hom was daar nie baie, wil ek amper sê, het was nooit, het was nie baie sacrifice, to do wat hy het dan, en dit was his life, Ik heb gelezen van die van die knechten. Ik wil misschien een paar van alle gedachten gewoon niet samen met u ook deel, want uh, soms van alle komen alle komen lang pas samen met met die wankels. In van die wankels dat ze om bij zie, je de bij je sterk persoonlijk het gehad. Hij laat niks om onder krijgen nie. Alles wat hij aangepakt het en die leven was hij succesvol min. En die reden ook om hij succesvol was, hij die jaren altijd eerste geplaas. En ik was actually blij toe ek die lees van een vriend en een mede knig van hom. Sy gesprek was ook om te praat van sy gees. En ek moet nou sê dat, een, ek denk, een, Trevor, jy het ook daarvan gemeens en een van die andere wankels het ook dezelfde ding gesê. Hy is een man wat baie gevoelig was met sy gees. En as hy gevoel het iets as die regie, dan sal hy gesê het, kijk hier, kom laat ons wacht. Een klaasie, hulle was wankels te saam, maar sê nee, ons wacht eerst een beetje, maar jy gees voel nie so lekker oor die biesigheid nie, kom ons wacht, kom ons bid eerst oor die saak, laat die Heere vir ons wees, wat ons moet gaan, en, en, en that tells you, not any, kijk jy, vandag is het ons maar baie, ons wil allemaal nou een besluit maak, ons wil, everything is impulsive, ons, ons, ons is nou, ons moet het nou het, jy you know, but, een wijse knechte wat hy, een wijse knecht soos die, is ene wat sê, kom, kom, ons wacht een bykie, ons hoor wat die Heere sê, en paar van hulle het het, het, het genoem, Ik moet sê, en dan het hulle ook genoem, een paar van hulle dezelfde ding sê, by sê het altijd iets in sy sak gesê, hy sê, my nooit my sone moet een lees sak gaan, sê het altijd iets in jou sak, sê het altijd in, in my, ok, ietsie beteken sê ek een paar rande, nie een knertsie nie, nee, ietsie, ok, nou, hy, 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 hy het so iets in sy sak geheet altijd, want wat even sê gaan, as daar een nood is, dan moet jy kan by, dan moet jy kan help, dan moet jy kan daar wees, en dis wat, 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 wat hy was, hy het, en een paar van hulle het dit genoem, Dit was sy, sy, sy natuur wat hy geheer het. Dit is die liefde wat hy geheer het vir God sy kinders en vir God sy werk. En hy is verseker as dit en nie. Ek, ek, ek wil ook nie te veel praat, maar hy gaan nie keveer en ek hoor iemand gesê, hulle was baie lief gewees vir daddy, but hoe was hy begin praat van geld? Ok, ons gaan nie veer en nie. Kan ek alleen daar trek en niks meer veer en nie. Ok, so, you know, jylle weet maar so kom ek sê. So, and, so, you know, but hy was, en dan het ek ook geleer, een van die wankels, nie, hy was baie oor sy voertuig, hy het baie, hy het trots het geet oor sy voertuig, sy voertuig was altyd skoon en nekkie, ek het nooit, en toe ek dink, ja, hy het alles hier gepaak, nie, net die, een, twee, hiervoor was hy, wat sy paakplek, sy kar, sy nou my kar sien vir oogend, hy sê, hy sê, ek maak om die draai staan, dat ek hier, nie, ek het sien hoe voel is my kar, maar by sy, sy kar was altyd nekkies en skoon geweest, hy was baie trots oor sy voertuig, ja, hulle sê ook, hulle noem dat hy was, ja, hy het vir, hy twee, ons weet, hy het, hy was twee keer getrouwd geweest, twee vrouwens, en elke twee, iemand het my gesê, hy was 19 jaar, met elke, met hulle al twee getrouwd, of oor die 19, nou is ek verkeerd, ok, vergeet, cancel dat, jyne, die lied nie, hy is op nie, you know, ok, uh, but, you know, but he was married twice, and he, and he loved both his wives, and you know why you can say that, because you can see on the children, you can see, District Apostle Barnes, many years ago, in a, in a service where ministers mentioned it, I still remember it was a Friday night service in Seapoint, and he said, how, how, do you, how does a father love, how does a husband love his wife? The father loved the mother. You see? He loved the mother, you know, he loved their children by loving the mother, by loving his wife. And you can see in the children the love that the father has for his wife. And that you, if I look at you today, uh, different moms, um, and jylle het groot geraak, jylle het baie lief om geraak, I mean, that, till the end you cared for him, you know, I mean, that there was no, uh, 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 there was no worried about biology, and wie sy pa is hy nie, you know, as wat my ambos sê, wat sê hy song, wie sy kind is die, dan kan sy sê, nee, wie sy wie sy kind is, you know, I mean, ons, ons, ons ken hulle baie, that was, was the love that you had for him, because the love that he had for you guys, and God will bless you for that, En hulle, en hulle praat, hulle, hulle, a few of the servants talk about 
you know, he was, a, he was one that you could turn to for advice. He always had something, as he was him immer gepraat het, he had always gevoel, as he was with basic praat, your, your go-to guy. You know, you could turn to him at any moment. And he would have something for you. And he would say, as he always had something, he would say, he had something in your sack. He would always say, he had much more than that. Not that he had something in his sack, but he had a lot more in his heart. He was always ready to share. And he had a special way to do it. How he had something with Hij heeft met allemaal gepraat, het, hoe hij met allemaal gedeeld het. En, en dit is een wonderlijke uh, eigenschap om te heet. Ja, want dat er, hij was een mentor, een vriend, en hij was een helper. En dan denk ik, hij is een hij rijdt, hij zegt, ik kan hou mijn broer zoals hij was. Want hij was lief voor elkaar, en het altijd bij je gaat om woord te gezellig. Ja? En ons het bij je van elkaar geleerd, geestelijk en natuurlijk. Ons is bevorig om wel voor drie weken te geleerd was er een samengeweer en hij zei hij is zo zijn jong om hij is zo mooi gelijk zo zijn jong man je weet wel ik wil amper zeggen hij is altijd zo zijn jong mooi jong man gelijk wat voor iele ja ze groeit voor lief voor die familie en hij noemde het hier ach broers dat is bij je gedacht dat is bij je het gedeeld samen gedacht dat samen but it's difficult to 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 verbalize and to put everything into into words and I just want to say, you have many memories of him. Many of you, you sit here as the, fa as the family and the friends, that then as I see you sitting here, I must say when I saw from Serene sent me the, the names, the list of names who was invited, and then I laughed because I, I, I knew many of the names, and I saw some of you, I knew the relationship that you had, and you built up for the years, and I thought, yeah, your family is sad today, and, and, and the children and the brothers and sisters, but there's also many of you who were very, very close to him. And today also feel this a personal loss, saying goodbye to, to, to Uncle Wilfred. But the memories you have, you know, no one can take that away from you. Some of it you will share as you go along. Maybe as, as brothers and sisters, you'll talk about things. I heard that he was very lieve stories to tell, to tell how he was very good. He was always so nice and nice. Uh, in morgen meer, you know, in, in a humorous way you could tell a story. And in a very snakse manier you could tell it. But I will say that there are many things that you said, that there are many things that you said, that no one else can do it. The same thing that you said, 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 and you know, that will stay with you forever. Nobody can take that away from you. And what you take with you is that memories. That memories which your dad, which your brother, which your friend, which our servant left for us, that goes with us into the future. And nobody can rob you of that. And some of it you'll share, and others will remain a very close treasure in your heart that only you and him knows about. Only you and know maybe what he did for you. Only the two of you will know that. Keep that memories alive. Keep that, treasure that memories. And we keep in that way his legacy alive. Yeah, I ask that we have a, a hymn now, a uh, musical item, please. Thus 
should we pass from the earth and its toiling? Only remembered by what we have done. Thank you. Only remembered by, I want to say, by what we have sang, and I can say today what you have done. The word chosen this morning, I have, this is the psalm, David speaking, it's, a, it's a, a psalm of thankfulness. If you read the heading of the psalm, they call it the mikta, which means it's a musical rendition of some sort, or literally a rendition of some sort. And David uh, praises God, thanks God. It's a psalm of gratitude, some, some of the theologians and scholars call it. And here we want to today look at his life, and he speaks about which I thought, when I thought of Uncle, un, Uncle Wolfred, that he was, he was a very jovial person. I mean, that's how I knew him. I knew his nature to be one who was always happy, one who, who, who always, when he was in the church, in the circle of his friends, brought a lot of joy to, to people. Always had this happy disposition. And I know for a fact his life wasn't always a smile. It wasn't always easy to have lost your, your two wives, have lost one of his sons, you know, I mean, it's not, it's, how can that always, how can that be so easy? But you know what? And I, I thought to myself, there must be a reason. There must be something that, that, that causes you to have such a joy. And looking through many scriptures, I came across Psalm, so this Psalm of David. And it says, I've kept, I've set the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. The reason that, what he says is the reason that I'm happy, the reason that I'm glad and, and, my, and, and the way I am, is you know why? Because I have the Lord always ahead of me. And you wrote that many of you, the children, the family, the friends, the ministers who, who wrote about him, those who worked with him, his leaders in the past, the retired ministers, they all spoke about the faith that Uncle Wilfred had. The faith that, that was displayed and that everybody who came into contact with him, you could experience. I must say, I, uh, Wilfred had, 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 you know, he had this center of attraction guy. He could always tell a joke. He was always, when you got to a party and he was there, they said, they were the far as Wilfred didn't they were. And everybody's drawn to him. I said, I was sit and I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I and somewhere there in the middle is Uncle Wilfred busy to tell something, to tell a story, to tell something that happened. And everybody was drawn to it, to that. And that personality, you know, what was that born out of? What, was, what filled him? What kept him going? Was his faith, his trust, his belief in Jesus Christ. That if God is with me, if, if, I, if the Lord is always before me, if I set the Lord in my life, if I make sure that everything I do, that it is focused on Jesus Christ, then everything else will be okay. Doesn't mean you don't have problems. Doesn't mean you don't have worries and burdens and concerns. He had plenty of that. But you know what it means? Is that I trust God. And if I say I trust God, I can, have, I can be happy. I can be joyful. Because I've given the problems and the worries and the concerns that life has given me. That's in God's hands. God is with me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? You know, as I think there's a, little, there's a little story we talk about trust. I think we've heard it many times. You know, when, the little, when they go, there's no rain and there's a famine in the land. And they say, okay, the whole town must go and we're going to pray. And then one little girl walks with an umbrella. You know, we hear that story many times. And they ask her, but where are you going to go? Where are you going with the umbrella? It's not raining. You say, no, but we're going to pray for it. So we're going to need this umbrella. And I want to say, Uncle Wilfred lived like that. He was happy. Because he trusted God. He knew what God meant for him. He taught that to us as a congregation. He taught that to us as the young servants. The way he followed his trust in his servants. His commitment to the Lord. Not his own will. Not his understanding. And he had much to say. But when it came to the work of the Lord, I can say in the meetings that we had, ministers meetings, directors meetings, he was here a bigger geweest. You didn't hear him talk all the time and have a opinion about this and about that. He was actually a quiet guy in the meetings. You know, because he was a follower. Whatever was decided, that we're going to do. We're going to make sure that that happened. And that spoke about a humble servant, as I mentioned in, in, in the beginning. He was a man of great faith. 
And as I said, they had challenges, I think a few years ago, 13 years, when I, I think when I just came here, I met him and soon after that, I heard that he was very ill. And when I mentioned him, then I asked some of the brothers spoke about it. Uh, I think he, he said to the Lord, he had a conversation. He said, if you're here, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it And he was paid for a whole long time in the house. The district elder then said to me, in one of the visits that he had with, with Wolford afterwards, when he had recovered, he said, with the oldest, one year ago. Then he said to me, uh-uh. He had his hair, his hair out of the house. Hy hang nie soot soot op die, op die kas. Hy sê, more as ek en sy saam. More as ek en, ek en jou en sy en my, en ons gaan more. Hy sê, that, die oos, uh, well, well, it is, he sê, ons word nie bedien by die huis mee nie. Ons gaat kiek toe. He sê, that was the last time that he, in that bout of his, of his life, was he at home. He, the next morning, hy sê, weet nie waar die kracht vandaan gekom het, but he was determined, hy klim in hy soot, en hy gaan kerk toe. And he said, that was a turning point in him. And it was such a, a period of his life that he, that he said he, he, it was a, where he, he was determined that he is going, God is going to help him. He trusted God. There was no doubt in his mind. And it's such a beautiful experience for me to, to, to see that. That in some ways we today have many, there's many worries and, and, and burdens around us. We live in a difficult time. We don't always trust the way we should trust. I heard the apostle say recently, he spoke about it. He says that many, many of us today, we look in our life, we say, oh, it's a difficult time that we're going through. We're not going to church. You know, what, what, you know, has God forsaken us? Chief Apostle mentioned in two, a few weeks ago, where is God? Why, why does he allow this? You know, what is he giving us? What? But he says, you're older. But the Lord is still caring for us. During this difficult time, we cannot come to service, but you know what? The Lord still teaches us. He gives us golden nuggets he gives us wonderful examples. And he said, today, when we, like we have to lay to rest the evangelist's base, your dad, your brother, your friend, when we have to say goodbye to him, does the Lord not give us this wonderful example for us? Even in a difficult time when the world finds itself in turmoil, when the pandemic is, is causing havoc in our lives, when it even sometimes sinks our faith, when we become, we become anxious, we worry. And then the Lord, even in this moment, when one is called home, the Lord uses to strengthen us. The Lord still shows us, I'm with you. Look, there is an example for you. Look, I've given you this example. I've given you this moment in your life so that you can stand still and, and reflect on a beautiful and see what can we do? How can we in the one or the other way adjust our lives, align our lives so that the life of a faithful servant, a dad, a brother, a friend, becomes a wonderful inspiration for us. God hasn't forsaken us. God is to, hasn't forsaken you today. And it's a very difficult moment in your life. But these moments is what makes us strong. These moments, what I want to say, brings us closer to God. Brings us close to each other. It, 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 it allows us to realize that we are all, you know, our time on this earth is, is, is numbered. I think Psalm says, the man is like grass. You know? He's like the flower of grass. It's in the morning in blossom, and the evening it's no more. And that is our life. But beloved brothers and sisters, and maybe sometimes we, we despair. Sometimes we hurt and we feel this pain. You know, say when I think there's a saying that goes, when love, you know, when love hurts, when love despairs then faith will strengthen us. Faith will comfort us. Faith will help us. And in this moment when your love and your, 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 the love hurts because you have to say goodbye, your faith allows you to be strengthened. Your faith is the comfort for you today to know that where your dad is, where God has called him, is the place where he's always striven to. Where I stand today, I know Uncle Wolf has stood many, many times. Many loved ones he had laid to rest. Many times he was the, the servant through which God comforted families like you said today. And he prepared them. He comforted them. And today the Lord has called him. And he prepared them. And I want to say the first thing he prepared himself. His faith is what today goes before. Before you as a family, as a children. You look to his example. To 
You see, what did my dad lay within us? What did my dad show us? What did my dad teach us? And if you reflect on his life, yeah, maybe if you what and you know what is in the in the in the in the in the buddle as we you know that you can you know this there can be maybe a car or there can be a house or whatever there's some money but that is only for a limited time. But you know, if you take with you the characteristics, the example, the faith, the love, the key he had for others. None of us, I don't think any of us, okay, can you know if the bruise and sit so good, but I don't think any of us can be like Uncle Wolf. I need a story to tell, so Uncle Wolf will tell it. I know Uncle Wolf at times, but I know he has a story to tell, I say, no, no, wait, 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 let me tell you a story to tell. So he tells you a story. You know, because he had a special way of, of telling that way. And none of us have to, you don't have to be like him. You don't have to tell a story the way he tells. But you know what? You must live. You must have the faith that he had. You must have the example that he set unto you guys. This, this eagerness, the joy with which he served the Lord. This beautiful, you know, inner conviction that what God has allowed in my life, what God has given me, that I love. I love with the faith that I have. And he loved his faith to the fullest. And I, and I pray that as a family today, you experience that the life of your dad goes before you. I've set the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand. For us, let us take that with us. That we put God always before us. What does it mean that God goes before me? The teaching of your parents. The, servant, the, the, the teaching you received in the house of the Lord. Your faith goes always before. And when you have to make a decision, you, you heard your dad about his character of making a decision while he was in active ministry. And I'm sure it wasn't just in the church, it was also in the home and in the family. That he never just made a decision on the, on, you know, at the spur of the moment. It was thought of, it was prayed for. And then you'd come with an answer. And then, by the time that the answer needs to be made, all the signs is there already. And it's easy to choose. You know, say, okay, that's what I want for myself. Do I also trust the Lord enough to wait? Do I also, I think, chief, again, I go back to the chief apostle service two weeks ago, and he said in the divine service, he said, how many times we ask the Lord for something, you know, but then we're not patient. We must learn to be patient. We must pray. We must meditate. He called it meditate. That means you must plead with the Lord. You must ask the Lord. And then you must wait. Then you must wait. That the Lord must give the answer. And that's, that's why Allah noemde say geest. He had said, my geest voel die regie. Kom ons wacht, kom ons bid nog oor die saak. And he was proven right many times. And I want to say, that's beautiful for us. That, we, that shows our trust in God. And that can only happen, again I talk about this humble nature. Only if you're humble, you can trust someone. If you are, you know, bloated and you've got your own mind and your own opinion, somebody else cannot tell you when and where you decide. You know, you're like Frank Sinatra says, I did it my way. Wilfred did it God's way. He says, what does the Lord want? I've said the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. And you know uh, why symbolically the right hand is used? In, in, in the time, the psalmist, you hear many times, Asaf even writes about it. The right hand was the hand in which when they went to war, they kept the seal was in the right hand. You know? And this is how they, 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 they went into battle strong hand to, to ward off the enemy. And he writes it in that fashion. The Lord is my seal. You know, I think he's, we, in, in, even in, in the other Psalms, is my refuge, fortress, and my seal, my God in whom I'm trusting. And that's for us. Follow the example of your dad. Follow the example of, that he has set for you. He trusted God. Even when he lost his first wife, even when he lost his son, when he lost his second wife, he just continued to try. It wasn't easy for you. It wasn't easy for you as a family. But it didn't change him. I can say these moments didn't change who he was. He still followed God faithfully. One of the, the, the brothers that I spoke to said to me, Uncle Wolfie had, a, had said with him a few years ago, a very, he said this is, he heard this in a divine service, and he made this word for him was very special to him, and he spoke a lot about it when he spoke to the district elder. He said it was, he was at a service, and he heard this word, and this heard this, he, he just found something special in it. He says, it was Psalm 139, verse 5, he could remember it. He said, you have heads me behind and before, 
and laid your hand upon me. Uh, you know, it, it means the Lord, he said, he, he liked that. He liked the, 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 the tone of that, of that verse. And he, it, it, it means so much to him in the time of his life. He says, the Lord has said, aged him. It means, you know, camp. He encamped me. It's like a hedge is the fence. And the Lord fenced you in. The Lord protected you. And he said, he laid his hand upon you. And, it, and he told the district elder, that word is something that lays very special within my heart. I don't know what we said it with, what who else knows about it. But I thought it just speaks about his character. His trust in God. That God is the one who is with me. God is around me. God is my, is my shield. He is my protector. I trust God. His hand is upon me. Come what may in my life. I am joyful. I'm happy because I know whom I trust. God bless you. Hold on to that. Hold the faith of your dad. Hold on to the memories that you have. The special memories that you shared with him. No one can take away from you. It's yours to keep. It's yours to share with your children. To pass on the faith that they had. The example that they had. That belongs to us all. Because none of you cannot hold it. It's like the, I think the Bible says you can't hide a candle under a bushel. You, know, you can't hide it under a, you can't hide a light. And his light sounds so brightly that all of us, those present here, those connected, those friends, family, colleagues, we speak about him because his light shines so brightly. And all that us, when we look at his life, can say, that is a man of God. That is a man that before who is God was first seek first the kingdom of God. And God added to him everything else. Blessed him. He was successful in everything. One of you wrote, my dad was successful in everything. that he, If he took on a challenge, he was determined and he was always successful. And now, with this race that he ran, he was also successful. He continued. He remained faithful until the end. Until the Lord came and the Lord decided to call him home. And you are sad. You are left behind. But don't worry. It's only for a moment. You know? It says the word uh, so long means so long. We say so long today. You know? It's a colored way of saying goodbye, but it's only we saying, listen, don't worry, we see you. Just you go ahead so long. We're going to get you there wherever, you, wherever you're going to go. Also, Ampada. I think one of you wrote in the poem, also wrote a poem about that your dad goes ahead of you. And that is the, the hope you have. This is the, the faith that we have that soon we will be together for time in all eternity. And God bless you. And God comfort you in the knowledge that the Spirit, you just do what He did. You waited for the Lord. He remained faithful. You remain faithful. You follow faithfully. And all of us know soon we will be together with the Lord for time in all eternity. And that which we believe and that which we have, we have we, we've heard so much about will become sight. God bless you. God comfort and strengthen you. And God opens wonderful avenues of blessing for you out of the life of your dad, you and your children, and as a family. You experience many, 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 many more the fruits of the wonderful labors that he and the seeds that he had planted. You will still enjoy for the rest of your life, even your children. God bless you and strengthen you into the future. Amen. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is a the family. This is a private cremation. I please ask the congregation to rise, and we do the committal at this moment. And now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall God over it until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Come let us conclude in prayer. And now, dear loving Father, we bring praise, glory, and honor to you. We say thank you, dear Lord, for a few moments that we could come together. Thank you for a wonderful life lived by a servant, a father, a brother, a friend. He was a beautiful example, wonderful father. Did he bring joy to so many? Some joy in caring, joy in sharing. Joy, dear Lord, in bringing when there was sometimes the one or the other felt a bit downcast. And when we were in his presence, everybody left with a smile on their face. The problems didn't disappear, but he gave each and every one a wonderful means to carry 
If for the moment we could set it aside, we are thankful for the beautiful life that he lived, for the wonderful and dedicated servant that he was, a father, a friend, a brother. And the Lord, may those who now have to, who remain behind, his children, his brothers, his siblings, his sisters, his friends, the Lord, a congregation, that us, when we think about his life, that we can only but be thankful that we were a part of it. For how sad it could have been if we didn't make use of the moments that we had together. And certainly, as a family, as his children, they enjoyed the benefits of his presence. And now, dear Lord, go with them into the future. Fill the empty space in the home. And dear Lord, in the moments when they are sad, and the moments when they miss him the most, dear Lord, please you be at his side. When tears flow freely, let them experience wonderfully your comfort into the future. Together, dear Lord, we place them into your hands and ask that a special angel accompany all of them on their way. Thankful for the care and the love that was given during this time of his life. For those who brought joy to him. For those who cared for him when he wasn't able to lay a special blessing upon their lives. For what you, you have said, a glass of cold water in your name will not go unrewarded. And many, and Father, have done more than just a glass of cold water. Lay your blessing upon us all now. Under the prayers of our leaders, cover us always. Let the power of their prayers also be the portion, Father, of each and every one of us present here. Prepare the way for us tomorrow, Father, when we, during this time, Father, although we cannot enter into a divine service in the church, we are thankful for the connection that we will have with via the audiovisual networking. And pray for a special blessing through word and the forgiveness of sins. Open the door so that soon we can return. And together, praise and glory and honor you. Now, go before us, dear Lord. Our desire, our prayer, sought in for us the time and the way. Send your son soon. If Jesus comes today, pass us not by. Accept us all into grace. Hear us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you, beloved. Please be seated. We have a closing musical item. support that has been extended to our family during the time of our loss. Yeah, and thank you for the undertakers, for those who cared for, for, for evangelists during this, this last days, and even you as a family, the care that you've given to him. Thank you also for the music, for the COVID team during this time, everyone who had, had a hand in making this day also bearable, difficult moment, 
a bearable one for you as a family. This is the conclusion, beloved brothers and sisters, of this divine service. It is a divine service where the coffin is outside the church. So maybe at this stage, I'd ask that the family, you are free to go out. And we, while you have a moment to say goodbye, as the court, as the hearse leaves, we will have some music for you. God bless and much strength to you. Thank you to those who also made the time to connect with us. God bless.